Hello and welcome to Building with Solar. This is a technical sort of thing. Let me open my presentation. Come on. Ah, uh, I went a bit long in my last one, so. There we go. Slideshow, right? Okay. Here we are, building on solar search. There we go. So, hello, I'm John Fiala. I will be talking today. Uh, who am I? I've been working with web programming for about 10 years now. I've done three years in Drupal. I am currently maintaining a number of modules, including the link module, Drupal markup engine, back reference, own term, Etc. Etc. I do a little bit of everything as needed. I work out of Denver, which is a lovely place to live, although it's nice visiting you all here as well. It's close enough that it's a nice little mini vacation run. So, uh, in brief, according to Wikipedia, Solar is an open source enterprise search server based on the Lucerne Java search library with XML, HTTP, and JSON APIs, hit highlighting, faceted search, etc. etc. Um, so basically what that means is, is Lucerne is the Java part that's doing the actual work of the search stuff. And, and Solar is the server bits sort of surrounding it, making it available on the web. Something like the caramel filling inside of a chocolate shell. Mmm, I love caramel. Right. <laughs> I do. I love it with a with a mm, with a sea salt on it. Ooh, it's so tasty. All right, so when you want to mess around with the base solar, which is what this is about, if if you need to install solar, there's some some good bits on it in the web. It's honestly not that hard. Um, but if you're working around with solar and you need to do something more than it does coming out of the box with the Apache Solar module, there's really sort of two sorts of changes you can make. Uh, you can change how the search is being performed and returned, and you can change how the data itself gets indexed. Um, so for, and let me switch over to my virtual machine real quick and pop that on. So for instance, in that case, we've got uh, Some example modules of how you can change how the uh, how the search is performed and retrieved is Apache Solar Autocomplete and Apache Solar Ajax. You can pull these down off of Drupal.org. Uh, Autocomplete gives you as you start typing out a search, it gives you a selection of possible things you could be searching for. Apache Solar Ajax, on the other hand, with some work will do, with some work with telling it how your theme is set up. Uh, allows the search to update without having to do a page refresh. And as I remember from when I did this last time, oh, I'm sorry, I need to start up my Ubuntu. Uh, I've got my, I, I love using Linux for my development and so use a lot of VirtualBox, uh, especially on the laptops where it's useful because then you don't have to mess around with how Ubuntu talks to the wireless. It's also nice because you can just pack up a virtual machine and move it to another machine. Uh, this will take a few moments. So do we have any initial questions or whichever while well, we've got a bit of dead space? Not yet. I'm nearly confusing enough. <laughs> uh, I can be confusing all sorts of ways. This is the problem with having somebody give two sessions in a row. Everything we thought we had done to get ready 
turns out we didn't. All right, so let me quick start off first by starting up my instance of Apache Solar, which for development reasons, I'm just using the example Jetty setup that comes when you download Solar. In production, I tend to use Tomcat, Apache Tomcat, to host these things. Um, there are many explanation bits on the web for how to set those up. All right, so now we've got Solar up and running. Let's pull up my website. I set up this website for this talk uh, about a month ago, actually, and using the uh, Feeds API module to pull in data from a couple of tech sites, Gizmodo and the like. So that would actually be something to search against. Devel Generate is a lot of fun, but uh, there's only so far you can get with doing searches on Lorem Ipsum. It's very zen. All right. Let's hit the status report and make sure everything's working before I continue. Yay, everything is working. And it's complaining probably because Devel is not up to date. They did a security release to Devel recently. Of course, I'm not sure. I mean, on the one hand, of course, you need to have security reviews of Devel, but you really shouldn't be running Devel on any production websites anyway. <clears throat> Yay, new content. Fantastical. So you may have noticed right there, actually, when I started typing, it started suggesting things I might be searching for. And that's that, uh, that right there is what I was talking about with the Apache autocomplete or the Ajax autocomplete. Now, if it's something I haven't done a search for before, it's not going to remember it. But, or at least I think I've got that on. That may be the... Hold on. I need to check and see if I've got that module turned on. I will feel truly silly if I don't. And I don't. That was just the usual uh, Firefox being helpful. Ah, thank you. It works! <sighs> Alright, let's try that now. There we go. That's what we should be seeing. This is the auto and that's much more nice looking. So I can see, for instance, the strings and how many hits each of them have. So I can say, oh, publishers is four hits. Let's hit that. Search. Ta-da! Come on, you. So, okay, there's a whole blank bunch of stuff coming back from saying publishers. And that's just a light example of just changing how, you're not really changing solar itself, you're just mucking around with how it is getting to things. And that was my demo. Okay, good, good, good. So if you want to customize search, there's a good number of places where you can do it inside of Drupal. Uh, some of which are more or less well documented than others. Uh, of course, you've got your search results TPL PHP, which is how each individual result is presented. You've got your search results TPL PHP, which is how the whole page of results is being rendered. Uh, you've got hook search preprocess, hook search page, and hook Apache Solar search result, which sort of re places the old hook node API search result in um, hook node API search result. 
remind myself, actually. Unfortunately, things have gotten away from me. I think that changes how the result is presented. Right. So the old hook node API, well, old, but the hook API search, hook node API search result option operation was this is being displayed on the screen. Do you want to add more information to how it's being displayed? Uh, which works nicely, but if you are going with uh, Apache Solar, you instead need to do hook Apache Solar search result. The reason for this is that when Apache Solar does a search and gets back its information as a chunk of XML, although it's got a bunch of the node information there naturally, it hasn't done a node load and it doesn't go through the hook node API stuff. So hook Apache Solar search result allows you to add stuff to it. As I remember in my example virtual machine I am actually let me open up some code here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually doing something with that so as to show some of the data from the search Right, because I'm doing my search on a number of different sites that have been fed in through uh, Node through uh, the feed API, I am adding this URL in this feed to the display inside of the hook Apache Solar process results, simply by posting at the beginning of the snippet which is the effectively the teaser for what you get back from Apache Solar. And now, if you'll excuse me for a second, I'm trying to remember how I originally did parts of this of this presentation. It has unfortunately been a little bit since I originally gave this. That's right. That's how I did it. I apologize. Back on track. Let me make sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, four. Where did I put that? Add settings, custom solar. There it is. Oh, brain. So I apologize. I originally gave this talk about a month ago, and I got a little busy, but we shall continue. Where were we? Right, so these are various places where you go in and customize how the search comes back and is presented. All right, so getting into how solar works. Solar is storing the data we send to it from Drupal as various information, and it's configured exactly how this data is being stored. It's configured through a schema.xml that you get when you install your, your, your solar 
it tells you go in here and change this out for that. And that is this schema.xml. See, here's this lovely huge XML file. This is defining all the possible fields that Apache Solar needs to keep track of for each Drupal node that we're indexing. Uh, each of these are referred to in different ways. Uh, what's the type? Are we indexing this field? Are we storing this field? And the difference between that is that the index is not the same as the XML it stores for each item that's being searched on. It's quite possible, and in fact you can see here, we have a title and a sort title, where the title is the title of the node, and we are indeed storing it and indexing it. But we also have a sort title, which is a different type, a sort string, which allows us to sort on the title more easily. And since we've already got a title, we don't need to store that one. And you can see there's even wildcard names for taxonomy names. You usually don't need to go in here and muck around, but it helps to know what you're playing with. So there's a whole bunch of fields in Drupal, of course, because of CK and other things. And so we've got a lot of wildcard names. And as long as you start what you tell a, what you call a field when you send it off to Apache with the correct string, then it will know how to handle that, such as having, uh, well, generally what it is is the first letter is the type and the second letter, or, or the first letters is the type, and the second letter is how many values there are for this field. So for instance, if we have an IS underscore, then it knows that that's an integer and there's only one value. And if it's IM underscore, then it knows that it's an integer and there can be more than one value. Uh, an example, of course, of a multi-value integer field on a node is usually taxonomy term IDs. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you really do have quite a lot of different uh, things you can call the this. Uh, one interesting thing to keep in mind is that um, anything that comes in as a single string, SS, will get copied as well automatically to a sort SS, which means that your uh, that whatever you put in that can be sorted on when people are doing a search and want to bring it back in that order. Uh, maybe you've got book notes with author names. Having that that way, you can bring them back and allow them to sort sort on the author name. Anyway, it's just useful to know that this is defined here when you're getting into the deeper depths of actually coding around, along with Solar. Uh, Flip back. Another useful thing that I brought up on that page is that you can actually go in and do a raw query against just the running uh, interface. In this case, the uh, localhost 8983, whatever the, the port you've got set up for your thing. Come on. There we go. But It's a whole search that's already there. But if we go in here, welcome to Solar. Hit the Solar admin. Suddenly we've got a raw interface directly to Solar itself. And the reason why this is really useful is that if you're doing something funky with Drupal and Solar and it's not working, it's good to be able to tell whether what's not working is because Solar doesn't know what's going on or whether because Drupal isn't presenting the command to Solar properly. Because if you get into some of the more complex uh, interfaces with Solar and Drupal, you've got to kind of rewrite parts of these. And so being able to directly query uh, Solar with whatever is just really helpful. It also lets you see exactly what Solar is sending back. Uh, here is your basic response uh, XML. How many rows is it sending back? How many did it find? Where is it starting from with like a pager situation? The body, all the data you need to know. Here you can see what I was talking about before. This is a string multiple field. 
Here's a single string URL field that I'm actually feeding into the code, and I'll show you that in a short bit. Here is, God help us, a list of the vocabulary IDs. They're all the same, but it still puts them all in there. And this being Firefox, we can actually collapse them down. So that's actually the entire chunk of data that it's throwing back at us. And back on the previous page, you can go in, and there's even a full interface where you can put down all the bits just to get everything down and to see what's going on. And playing around with this will really help you figure out how to, to get this all working with your code. All right. What was I doing next? There we go. So let's say you've got a new field, such as the URL of your feeds, the information you're pulling off of a feed, and you want to put that into Solar for searching. So what you've got to do is you've got to, to take the fields that you need to put into, the, into Solar, you need to decide what the sort of types they're going to be, and then you go into Hook Apache Solar Update Index. And let me pull that up real quick and show you how I was doing that. So Hook Apache Solar, here we go. Update Index, here we go. Uh, this is where I am implementing it for my test setup, custom underscore solar being the name of, the, of this thing. Uh, as a side note, all this code is available on my website, uh, which is jcfiala.net. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, do we have a field URL? If so, then I look to see if it's one of the Gawker fields that I want to match off of. And if so, I then get the field name. Apache Solar Index Key is a useful function that builds off of the field definition, uh, the, uh, like I said before, the type and the multiplicity. This will work off of CCK field definition, so I'm able to pull that off here, as I remember. Where was I pulling that view ID off of? I'm not, oh, I see. This is me where I was going to do that, and then I didn't actually end up using it, so I should comment it out. So when you've got your data, which is, in this case, the URL I'm looking for, which is in matches one, and I want to add it to the document of, and, and the document in this case is the XML document we're sending off to uh, Solar to index. Uh, here is my field name. And before I send it off, I want to send it through Apache Solar Clean Text, which is sort of the check plane of Apache Solar. This makes sure that you're not going to send off some information that's going to corrupt your port database. Uh, then you just call document add field. Document's gotten handed to you up here. And uh, uh, that's, I see, that's what I was doing. I was fully f figuring out the feed source. Was this from, from Gizmodo? Was this from Lifehack? I was just from uh, the other one. So that's what I was doing there. Here I'm actually grabbing the URL directly and again signing it through Apache Solar Clean Text and doing the ad field. And that is what puts it into the database like I had shown you before. Let me pop back here and do that search again so I can point it out. So that's how these two got put in. The feeds, SS feed source and SS URL is there because of this code adding it to the index here. Do, do, do time check. Right. Okay. But maybe you not only want to do that, but you also want to have a facet. As you know, one of the great things about Apache Solar is the faceted search that it makes available. And if we scroll down here, you can see that I'm allowing people to filter by the feed type. If you only want to see stuff coming back from Kotaku, you can click here, and we add it to the feed source automatically. Um, that is not too hard either. But here, we need to implement the hook facets. Hold on a second while I scroll down to it. Where did I have that? 
Uno momento. Hook Apache Solar Facets. That's right. There it is. All right. <coughs> so Hook Apache Solar Facets says I have a facet block, basically. This is the block delta that I'm using. I know that in hook block basic it says use numbers, but you can use strings, and I find that to be a lot more understandable when you're rereading reading your code a couple years later or a couple months later. So I'm saying uh, this is the field I'm going to facet off of. Down here, I define the block inside of hook blocks where we find out what the enabled facets are. As you know, you can go in and turn on and turn off facets in the administration. So it's a good idea to check here to make sure that your field is still being uh, still desired as a facet. Uh, and then... Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo 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 right. And then return the basic data based off of what you've got up here. I'm basically returning this whole thing again. And then in the good old view section, we simply, and a lot of this is just copied out of some of the basic facets that are already done in the code you get originally. Uh, you check to see if it's searched. You get the response out of the cache. Um, see if you are, in fact, enabled. And if you are, then based off the delta, you run Apache Solar Facet Block. Oh, I wish I remembered the details of some of the stuff I'm doing here. I apologize. Right. So, right, the main things here is I need to say what module I'm in. I need to pass along the delta for the block. I need to tell it which field we're fasting on. And I can tell it a callback for it to call for each field that it's going to display in the facet block. In this case, all my cap, all my callback do, is doing is making the first letter of each word capitalized, which is, I think, prettier. And that's basically it to get a facet up, a facet block of your own up and running define the block and wire it in through hook Apache Solar Facets. Cool. So there you go. Hook Apache Solar Facets, hook block, making the facets pretty, and I cannot count to five. Um, right. So, and, and this last bit here at the bottom is important. If you're playing around with these facets and nothing's changing when you keep messing things around, even though you're clearing cache, watch out. The cache underscore Apache solar table at the time of, as of at least a month ago, was not properly wired up to the usual hooks to say clear this table when you do a clear cache. You actually have to go in and truncate the table by hand to make it clear. Uh, it's a pain. I'm sh I believe I remember seeing that it was going to be fixed in the next release of Apache solar. Uh, there was a ticket that had been, you know, applied with a patch and all. But in the current release version, as far as I know, it doesn't. So if you're having trouble with developing and you run, because and this is here because I had trouble when I was originally making this whole uh, block thing with the facets work, make sure you, you clear out a cache Apache Solder and see if that helps. So let's try and get a table that killer process. Yeah, that's, this is a, a table like all the other cache tables. Cache underscore views, cache underscore pages, uh, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's a regular MySQL cache table. It just, they didn't put, for whatever reason in the current version, they just forgot to put in the bit of code that says, uh, oh, when you're, you know, it's, it's, it's like hook clear cache or something silly like that. It just doesn't 
return this table name as one of the tables to be cleared when you do a clear all. Uh, annoying, but what you're going to do. And I didn't want to change pages yet. I wanted to hit next. Yes? Just uh, FYI, uh, your website won't let us have those files. Yeah, we're four things are forbidden. What? That's security. That's right. Did you ask please? You can friend him on Facebook. It's the Facebook authentication. Um, Wow, isn't that funky? Hold on a moment. Nobody watch me type. Let me real quick go in. I don't think I did. I pro I actually, I think what it is is I've got my. Uh, Yes, well, for everybody else, it's locked out. I, however, am special, little unicorn. <laughs> Let me know if the glare from my ego is too bright, and I'll uh, see what I can do about that. <laughs> funny because nobody ever mentioned that to me before. Access is there. Uh, I'll have to look into it later. I am astonished. Why would that not work? Yeah, well, that should be the default one. I was wondering if it was missing. What is the error that we're getting? Solar building ODP. Well, okay. If 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 I sit up here, I will spend the rest of the session pounding on that instead of talking about useful things. <sighs> All right. So, real quick thing. Uh, unfortunately, we're running longer than I normally would be. So if you want to do something interesting like allowing people to sort on a field, you need to tell Apache Solar about the field being sortable, which means that we get to play around with subclassing a solar base query class. So uh, the nice thing about the Apache Solar module is that all of the things that it uses to talk to solar are classes. 
And moreover, the nice thing about that, beyond the fact that these are classes, is the fact that which class it tries to load to do these operations is declared, is, is controlled by a line in the variables table, which means that if you change the value in the variables get, you can tell it to use a different class, the class presumably that you're providing, and then in that class, you can more directly muck around with how Apache Solar is doing things, or how Apache Solar the module talks to Apache Solar the, uh, the thing. So, right, so in the Solar Base Query module, there is a default sorts function that returns the values that we're being allowed to sort on. And here, all I am doing is simply telling it that in addition to the parents list of sorts, which is stuff like the title and the date it was created and the like, we want to add feed source in the URL. And we do this by giving it a title and the default direction we want to sort in. So if we pop over here, you can see that the sort by does not currently include those. But for demo purposes, I have a form which allows me to change which base class I want to use. And of course, it complains about develop again. So then we come back over here, and there they are. So I can sort on feed source now. So here's giz, 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 k, 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 life hacker at the bottom, which is why I changed around that earlier bit so it would display the URL and the feed and the results, because otherwise I'd be like, I sorted by feed source, and you have to believe me. Uh, so again, all I'm doing here is simply adding to the list of sorts and returning it. This is the very simplest sort of subclassing. For safety's sake, I am including the base class in the top, just in case it didn't get automatically included on its own. And then the code where I'm actually telling it to use my class instead of the other class, is zip up here, is here. There's, of course, your standard form. And then here all I'm doing is I'm saying variable get or variable set of the Apache Solar Query class, and I'm giving it an array consisting of the module where this is defined and the name of the class itself. Um, pretty simple there. Do I have any questions real quick? You've got a question. No, you, you can only really use one base class at a time. So one of them would somehow end up being in charge and would prevent the others, which is why we want to be careful about this sort of thing. If a, I don't think there's any mod extension modules that do this sort of, of work. Spatial I've only... Solar I'm sorry? Spatial solar. Has its own class that uses. Spatial solar, okay. So, so it's a kind of a question of take a look at what extensions you're using to make sure maybe if you know you're going to be using the, 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 this extension solar thing, you might need to subclass off of their class uh, to get the extra functionality, which is why it's always good to, if you can, like I did here, invoke the base class and add to it rather than starting from scratch. Because if we were based off of a different base class which had done other things, then uh, this works. Right, so that was the simple thing. All right, what? All right so at the moment, it's 1049. 
And if you're in a rush to get to one of the next classes, I do not mind at all if you start packing up and heading out, because I certainly understand. But I'm willing to talk for another 10 minutes or so if you're willing to sit here and listen to me. So this is what I was basically just saying a few moments ago, uh, how to set which class you're going to be using. Uh, and as I say here, normally you would want to do this in the .install of your module. Um, or And you want to make sure you've got your hook enable, hook disable, uh, handling it as well. Because God forbid somebody disables your module and it's still trying to use a, a class it no longer knows how to find. Um, uh, right, so sorting on more than one field is tricky. Uh, right now, Drupal core is set up only for sorting on one field at a time. Uh, and that's hard coded into how the Apache Solar tries to do, the Apache Solar module tries to do the search. Uh, it wants one field with a pound name and a pound director, direction. And unfortunately, uh, the point where it's messing around with the pound name and pound direction is called uh, is called after the hook Apache Solar Modify Query. Um, up, by the way, hook Apache Solar Modify Query, useful little hook, lets you mess around with how things are being done. So, uh, so we have to kind of cheat to be able to sort on more than one thing at a time so that we don't accidentally kill any kittens by hacking code. These kittens are perfectly safe. That was my second joke for the presentation. You can leave now. <laughs> so here's the actual problem code here. Um, so up here is where we're doing the Apache Solar Modified Query hook. And then down here is where we get the sort name and sort direction. Um, and uh, yeah, so we can't actually do anything with this fun stuff. If it was something where the sort string was defined up here and then it went through, we could do something. But here, well, we kind of cheat. And I've got that cheating in here as part of the next bit, I think. Come on. Close. Too many windows open. Where did my code go? There it is. <coughs> what was I doing here? Oh. Alright. And this is the point. I'll try to remember what the hell I was doing before. And I don't. I apologize. I have lost where my demo was going to be. So I'm going to skip that bit real quick. Well, actually, this is a good point to just sort of wrap up anyway, because I seem to have lost where I was going. So are there any questions before we wrap up? I want to hear more about who's going to kiss the filters. <laughs> 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 That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, yes. Um, right, so very quickly, we want to tell Lucerne or Solar the sort of thing like I've got here, TID 823 or 1009. Uh, but Apache Solar isn't built to do that, so you have to play around with sub-questions, sub, uh, sub-classing the Solar search, which I believe I've got set up. Uh, that was the multi-sort thing. All right, so real quick, it is possible to do, like if I want to do iPhone... So that's all the iPhone stuff, or Apple. And here you can see it's actually doing that. We've got all the Apple and iPhone stuff here. And 
Right. Man, and this is a lot to explain. Really what you probably want to do is get at my code and look at what I was doing there sure. because I don't think I can get into it right now. It is a bit complex and it involves messing around with various fields that get sent. Uh, I will try and figure out why you can't download my example code and get that fixed uh, probably in a few moments. I'll just sit down and start banging at that. But I, be I believe we've got somebody coming in after me. Because yes. people are coming in. And people don't come in at this phase of a presentation unless they've got things planned. Let's take a quick look at the schedule. All right, Doug is supposed to come in here. And he hasn't yet, because you know when Doug has walked into the room. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually sharing a hotel room with him. He's a, he's a cool guy. Uh, actually, I wanted to stay and, and see what he had to say about this. So, yes, I will wrap this up. And that means I need to go find my thing. So thank you all for coming and listening to me. I apologize for being so disjointed. I spent most of my time preparing for my eager presentation. Uh, and uh, should probably spend a little more time reminding myself of this. So I apologize, but I hope that you did learn something about extending solar programmatically. And uh, I look forward to seeing what people come up with. And thank you very much.